welcome back, Wyoming Knuckleheads. I'm your host, Aaron. Zach, what's going on, man? Not much. It's spring break. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of like, uh, did National Lampoon ever do like a spring break one? I was thinking of Animal House. Yeah, in, Animal in, uh, House. Belushi going, toga. <laughs> so, but I was like, that's it's probably just one of the uh, like vacation <laughs> movies. One of those ones. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, no, as you as a student teacher, you're like, yes, this yeah. is good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was telling one of the other teachers today. Last week, I wasn't like, we need spring break to happen right now. This week, I was like, yeah, yep. it couldn't come sooner. The kids so, are crazy. and Yeah, and yeah. it's because they know it. Yeah. I feel like spring break should be a surprise every year. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't let them know because <laughs> then because they're waiting for it. And then they're just, you know, they don't care about anything but spring break the yep. whole week or two leading up to it. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. It's a surprise. No I'm one an, knows. I'm an innovator. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. No, it's good. Yeah. Uh, the parents wouldn't know. I mean, everyone would be right. on edge. Then kids aren't leaving 10 days early for spring break and getting this like 15 days vacation. Yeah. For sp- yeah. yeah. Just like, yep. We'll let you know. Yeah. There's, I know <laughs> we're talking to you. Some of you parents that <laughs> go on these like 20 day vacations, yeah. like, okay. Right. <laughs> you get, you get 10 days. Yeah. I mean, if you count both the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. That's not enough right. for you. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you want? <laughs> right. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's spring break. And then yeah. also in celebration of spring break, it is the anniversary. Yeah. Of Corona. It's, I mean, it was about a year ago that yeah. Sheridan and, and Wyoming kind of locked down for those two weeks. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah. Crazy so to think about. In celebration, I went and got some Corona beer for us. Yes. Um, so we're going to enjoy this on, on air. And you're, uh, look at you, like the premier one too. Like, so I went in there and I grabbed, I've got the extra and then the premier. And so the extra is in my, in my truck right now. Oh, okay. I got you. But this is good. Yeah. I I didn't realize until I left there. Ah, you're right. But I also got a nice church key for the the studio. (laughs) We're moving up. (laughs) I'm going to get this in the. Yeah. Yeah. I know how to do this. There we go. Ooh, that was yeah. good. That was good. <laughs> Here you go. I was going to say, this is bad TV, yeah. but uh, <laughs> we've got video. Um, here. Oh, spilled oh. it on myself. I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Go. We got it. I have to get a pole of yeah. the Corona. <laughs> My wife's shaking her head, and she's like, he's going to get all red. <laughs> um, no limes. I didn't have time to get limes. Ah, you're okay. That's okay. <laughs> We're not like a uh, high production show here. Uh, remember, low expectations. Right. <laughs> low expectations. Um, well, and we were just talking about, so it's been a year, and like we've, like, I think everyone can agree the absurdity that happened. Now, yeah. the virus was real. I'm glad the vaccine's out. I just got my second shot today. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But, like, if you're, like, you were talking about Rand Paul getting after Fauci, but, like, yeah. you are so <clears throat> dumb. And, like, that's what it is. Like, he's doing it in a nice way, but it's, like, you are an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're fear-mongering people to wear two masks instead of getting the vaccine. Yeah. Which is it, dude? Right. Is it the vaccine or wearing masks? Yeah. Because then he's going to come after him hard and say, if it's a mask, then we should have been open all the time. Right. With masks on. Right. Which... Anyway, so yeah, I'm glad. Thank God for Rand Paul, man. Yeah. He's my guy. It's a good clip. Uh, people should go watch it. Yeah, he's Rouch, my- Fauci. I always say Fauci. Fauci doesn't like he can't. He doesn't come back to me. He's just like his response is, "I disagree with you," and then it's over. Oh, great! Like, <laughs> yeah. You're a, you're a medical professional, and you, yeah. all you say is, "I disagree." Yeah, which is like you should be using science. That'd be great. Right. Um, yep. Yep. And then we were talking about Lexi and I are going to go to Greece, and like the airlines, like, hey, just FYI, you know, Canada right now. You have to take the 72 hour test before yeah. you board the airplane. Then you got to test again when you get to Canada. And then you have to do a mandatory three day quarantine, um, which is paid for by the government, which is great, which Canadians should be pissed. Like, are you? Oh, yeah. What? And then, but then I emailed the airline. I'm like, hold on a second. I'm like, I'm not entering the country. I'm not entering Canada. Yeah. I'm trying to get to Greece. <laughs> and I have, we have vaccine. So I'm like, so we'll see what they say. I think yeah. it's, it has to be trying to enter Canada. That that has to be it. Right. I'm like, there can't you can't be a country dictating all these rules to the airlines. Yeah. But weirder things have happened. So, anyways, yeah. but um, <laughs> yeah, no, this is a good idea. Uh, 
hopefully we don't do the whole uh, Karen Moxie thing of like, I don't understand her. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't make sense because then take we're going to be drink. pulling. Yeah, take a pull. Um, <laughs> and we're in trouble. Yeah. Um, before we start getting into stuff, not, again, nothing local unless you found something, Zach, but uh, no. a lot of state news. Um, and and it'll be nice and short today. Um, I think, oh, I'll tell you this after we mention our Cloud Peak sponsor. So DYT Solutions is our Cloud Peak partner. Um, they can offer any custom marketing solutions for your company or brand. They're a full scale digital marketing firm. Um, like we said in our last episode, they're mostly a lot of their team is remote. So you just give them a call, shoot them an email and they, they can help you with it, whatever you need. Um, they've helped us with our website, the, those videos we've been posting on Instagram, that yeah. intro was done by them. Um, so give them, uh, give them a look They're at uh, designyourtech.com, and then it's admin at designyourtech.com is the email to reach out to them so that's yeah. our that's our cloud peak sponsor um dyt solutions um zach i forgot about this i interviewed a good friend of the show salem thine yesterday from esal yeah and uh to lead up into this 20 minute e uh interview it was great because he recaps again what esal does and it's i think it's very important for people out there they are they're a recovery company uh for oil and gas um, and they use water, so they've they've perfected a water system on on the salinity and the wettability of oil coming out of the ground. Okay, okay. that's kind of the my landman view there. Sure. Um, but Salem does a great job. He describes that they've kind of changed their business model. They work with chemical service providers, right? Because in in fracking. They use some chemicals. Sure. Now, anyone out there, they only use under one percent. So when they're pumping the liquid into frack, under one percent is chemical. Everything else is water. So right. <laughs> don't freak out. But this is why a water company like ESAL would be important, right? Because right. the other ninety nine point nine percent is water. So you need to know what you're doing with your water. Yep. So let's jump into that second interview with Salem Thine from Engineered Salinity. And that was our interview with Salem Thine. Um, those guys are based out of Laramie. Jeff, his dad, is a, used to be a professor at UW. Um, one thing I took away from that interview, Zach, is Salem brought it up on his own in regards to, and we're going to get into this later in the state stuff, is the oil and gas industry needs to do a better job on their messaging. Mm. Um, and uh, he didn't say it, but we've said it. Coal, coal's dead. They, they yeah. didn't. Ten years ago, they should have been using all that money to talk about carbon capture, carbon technology, um, you know, like that professor at UW that microwaved coal powder to make graphite. Right. We should have been doing this 10 years ago. Yeah. And that's on the coal industry. That's their fault. Right. Um, and Salem brought up of, you know, this is how it's always been done. That's not good enough. And, and the oil and gas industry needs, you know, COVID was good in a sense of like it pushed people out. Yeah. You know, that had that mindset. And now the people that are left are like, hey, we got to innovate and we got to change. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, it was like a hyperdrive of like, you know, we better m messaging. We got to innovate. You know, we've we have the technology and we have the people to do it. So yeah, um, good. that was a Salem Thine from ESAL. Um, local news. Um, the boys and girls soccer team here in Sheridan, they're playing right now. The girls are probably getting done. They started at three, I think, against yeah. Buffalo, and then the boys will start. Yep. Um, we were just talking about this is a anniversary of COVID. Right. Kids didn't get to play soccer last year. Yeah. So this yeah. this is fantastic. Um, I think the state of Wyoming still has some really dumb rules. Mm. Like a coach was telling me, like, they can only have, like, 20 people on the sideline, which I'm like, well, in football, they could have as many as they wanted. Right. Yeah, why is it any? Why is it different? Are you going to tell me a helmet changes that? Right. <laughs> Again, like, why are we letting the government dictate stuff? Because like that makes zero sense. Yeah. Yeah. Or let them wear masks. Again, this see right. we're in this Until loop you go again. In. Yeah. Right. So, anyways, but thank God they're playing. That's all I'm going to say. Right. No, don't change anything. State yeah. of Wyoming High School Association. Yeah. Let them play. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to believe some of those kids haven't haven't played in over a year. Yeah. And some of them might be more. Yep. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. Um, some of the coaches are like, you know, they're playing Buffalo and Warland, so not 4A schools, but, you know, it's they're trying to tell their kids, like, hey, we have no idea what the, you know, because yeah. you look at film, it's going to be from two years ago. Right. So you don't you don't know. Yeah. So it's like, you guys better be ready, right? And 
And honestly, the Buffalo teams have always been really good. So mm. it's like you better just be good in general. Yeah. No, that's that's exciting. That's really cool. Um, yeah. We have to keep up with them and yep. uh, and see how they're going. Be Absolutely. Cool to get, uh, Coach Reiser's still coaching the girls, right? Heck yeah. Yeah. And then uh, is it Sodi coaching yep. the, the boys? Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's got the boys. And uh, yeah, it'll be exciting. We should catch up with them because, yeah, they haven't played in two years. So yeah. it's kind of a... You Interesting know, gotta, to see what their mindset is going into this. Yeah, got to get refreshed up, you know, right. on all the coaching. So, <laughs> um, all right, Zach. State stuff. Yeah. Um, I gotta. I can't see very well. So, <laughs> um, this is good. I think this is good, Zach. House Bill two hundred nine. We talked about this Wednesday. So, House Bill two hundred nine is the legalizing marijuana. Yeah. Um. So obviously, uh, session I think is back in now. Thursday and today, I don't okay. know. Maybe they're doing virtual. Um, Representative Prezena, is that her? You say your la- her last is it name? Prezena or Pro- Provenza? Provenza, um, out of Laramie. Yeah. Anyways, she now. This was reported by the Trib, uh, it's Casper Star Tribune, and this was her Twitter. So it's like, okay, well, she needs to prove the numbers here. Yeah. So I want to say that firsthand, but she claims that. Somebody from the Department of Corrections gave her an estimate of how much the state is is I don't want to say wasting, but how much the state has to to pay to one individuals incarcerated at the amount of marijuana that this bill would legalize. Okay, and how much it it it's costing us to keep people under parole once they get out. Okay, and again, this is all I would assume it's based on like you know if we legalized it, you know who's that fall under um she said the estimate was 19.4 million dollars a year interesting that's a lot of money yeah for okay so this is people who would be incarcerated if they broke the law that's being introduced yeah so so if it was if it was legalized right so she had numbers like i think it's about 300 to 400 people incarcerated and then it's about I want to say like 3,000 to 4,000 people on parole in the state of Wyoming. Okay. So the cost of in keeping those people incarcerated and the cost of us following them around parole, if we pass the law, they wouldn't be, is what I'm saying. Yeah, right. right. So that cost that the state of Wyoming pays Current, a year. Okay, so that's currently, that's what they Currently pay. is okay. 19 million point four. Now, like I said, she says that's what the Department of Corrections says. So yeah. I want... I want an actual official to say, yes, that's what it is. Right. Um, my thing, Zach, is if that's freaking true and we can make $30 million a year on revenue, yeah. that's $50 million right there, right now. Yeah. You, y'all you better do it and send it to K-12. $50 million is not a joke. Right. What are we doing? Yeah. That's $20 million is a lot of money, man, yeah, to be is. spending on that. Yeah. Um, it's an insane amount of money for 300 people incarcerated. Yep. And, and then, then the multiple thousand, thousand on on parole. But how much how much does that cost? You're not paying for those people to be in in jail and right. fed and clothed. It's you know it, it. Someone needs. I think this this is where this is where my libertarian comes in. Is like look, yeah. like <laughs> at some point we got to be physically responsible. Like if we're not stopping someone from using a substance, you know, yeah, um, especially over the age of twenty one. Honestly, it's not the government's place to say what they can and can't do. You know, I mean, to a point, I should say. To you know, there's laws and like, right? You know, right. can't kill somebody, but, um, but costing the state twenty million dollars a year, yeah. Come on, come on. Uh, know, that's like, a imagine good selling point for for legalization. Yep, I mean, it is for Co- fiscal conservatives, and yeah. Think about this. Can you imagine how many people would be? up in arms if our Department of Corrections was spending $20 million on people with, like, alcohol problems, DUIs, right. alcohol problems. Yeah. Which, may, I don't know, maybe we are. And it's like, well, just, <laughs> right. you <Yeah>. know. <laughs> um, but that's what I'm getting at. Like, that's yeah. that's a lot. And you know what's going to happen is the Department of Corrections is going to say that's a lot of people losing jobs. Right. Well, sorry, bud. Get another job. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, what – or maybe we use the, the money for, like – Real things like human trafficking, murder, real right. crimes. Yeah. Um, you know, so any, oh, I, your thoughts, point. Zach? Yeah. That's a great point. Uh, 
that yeah <laughs> i kind of echo all the same things that you said like let's make sure that's the real number um yep but let's i mean yeah figure out where where can that money be better spent exactly so um on the same note i want to tell you this story someone was telling me this story about i guess there was a group of guys out in dayton they were trying to steal like vehicles and stuff and they uh anyways they got onto like the canes's place so like I messaged Nate Kane and uh, they shot at him like, and Nate wasn't packing and, (laughs) um, and he was herding cattle. And I was like, well, one, are you okay? And he's, you know, he's like, I'm fine. And I was like, did they hit any of your cattle? And he's like, no. And then I had heard that they got onto the padlock ranch and they stole a vehicle, but then the padlock guys, you know, obviously shots are getting fired and they steal a vehicle, but the padlock guys tried chasing him down and got to like a little shootout um, with whoever these guys were. Um, and they, I don't think they've been caught yet. But what? this was just this past week. Yeah, like yesterday or this week or what? yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> See, like, so this is what I'm talking about. Like, so we're wasting twenty million dollars on, you know, something that could be legal. Yeah. How about we have like maybe another deputy out there in Sheridan County to track down these freaking knuckleheads? Yeah. That could have wow. they. As far as I know, they haven't hurt anybody, but it's like they could have. Jeez. You know, Nate could have got shot. Yeah. One of his cow could have got shot. The padlock guys could have got shot. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God for the Second Amendment. You know, right. Nate's like, I'm going to be packing for the, now on. Yeah. You know, he's got a daughter. And then uh, Gosh. the padlock guys had guns and chased these guys. Crazy, man. Yeah, so anyway, I'm just, you know, what what are our priorities <laughs> as a society for crime? That's what I'm getting at. So, yeah. No, anyways, that's a good question. But thank God everyone's safe out there. Yeah. yeah um, absolutely. Yeah, Nate, you better be packing now. Yeah. I'm um, sure he doesn't have a shortage of guns. It's yes, <laughs> he didn't have sure it on him. Yeah, with him. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure you have it with you now. Um, I should have put this the articles act, but I don't think it uh, had any of the details on this bill. Um, I'll probably reach out to Ashley Harp Street of the Wyoming Taxpayers Association. A lot of rumors going around that the toll bill. So the bill is there'd be a toll on I-80. Um, so if you don't know where I-80 is, that's from like Cheyenne across the state to rock springs yeah um i'm curious how much that would generate for the state a toll on i-80 um the hardest part for me zach is people for example athletics travel through there like rock springs laramie right rock springs to cheyenne right are they exempt yeah so and then parents following their, their kids to go watch like what that's a good point too or fans from rock springs all the going to laramie to watch u play yeah so, but it really seems like YDOT, the uh, Department of Transportation, is really pushing this. Mm. And I think they're going to do it. I mean, I just, I, again, this is like, we just talked about there's 20 million sitting there from the Department of Corrections. Right. Yeah, I, that's interesting because it's not like Denver where there's several different ways that you can get to a place. Exactly. If you don't want to go on a, the toll road, you have a different road you can take. Yep. Uh, I eighty is like the unless you're taking back roads, <laughs> like, yeah. But I eighty is the is the main way. You can't so. like you can get to the, yeah. You just can't like I was thinking about we. Uh, um, I guess from Sheridan, maybe, but you know people take the back way down to Laramie, but you know I. Yeah, at some point I'm thinking like if from here to Rock Springs, like right. You could get to about, I think, like Bags or Rollins. Mm-hmm. But from there, you got to get on I-80. Like, that's yeah. like, there's nothing there. And that's been mostly, that'd be mostly back roads at that point. But then you got to get on I-80. Like, yeah. that's just how it is. Unless you're, I mean, unless you really want to be backwoods, you know, right. um, back right. back roads. Um, I don't, my, my, my point here, Zach, is I haven't seen a number. Like, YDOT has not come out and said, hey, this is how much it would be. This is how much we would get. Yeah. And then they haven't answered our questions of, okay, Wyoming citizens, right? Yeah. We just covered a wide range of people, people following their kids around for athletics, uh, going down to see the university athletics. Shoot, my dad's gone and seen my stepdaughter like 10 times, you yeah. know, to Laramie. So it's like, you know, other parents do that. So Right. I don't know. So we'll see. And I, my thing is like, we don't know how much this is generating. That's my like, yeah. Is it $2 million? So it's like, real, that's what we're like. Right. Good job guys. Right. I mean, there is a ton of trucking that goes through there. Right. So, but how do you, that, how do you, right. 
how do you police that? It's probably going to cost more money to start police, like, right? Which they don't yeah. want to admit that because it just keeps their job safe at Y dot. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The state, those state guys, you know, they know how to. Yeah, they know how to. Security man. Th- yeah, they know how to do it. <laughs> I, I don't blame them for that at all. But, um, anyways, uh, Zach, this I don't know if you've read this from Wildfire or not. No, I just I'm I'll, just looking at. I'll it right talk now. about it here. So, this was reported by Wildfire. So that big BLM project that was it wasn't ever approved. So that's my first thing is that big Converse County thing. Remember, they were trying to push it with the Trump administration in December. Yeah. It never got approved through the BLM, okay? So, cool. just call slow down, Turbo, right? So, it's that didn't even get passed under the Trump administration. Obviously, in the Biden administration, that's not going to happen, right? Because he, he's banned all leasing and drilling, okay? I didn't even know there was this guy. Apparently, he got fired, and he's upset about it. And he claims it was because he wasn't working with that former administration to get this project through. And so apparently we're calling him a whistleblower. Zach, correct me if I'm wrong, but a whistleblower is like, I'm thinking Ed Snowden, like there was something illegal going on and he's like, Hey, this is illegal. (laughs) And then, and then they fire him or they're trying to shush him up. Right. And then, and then he's like, you know, that's what am I wrong? Like is isn't no, that what a whistleblower yeah, is? Yeah, you're right. And it's whistleblowers are also have immunity. So they yeah. can't be fired if you find out who they are. Exactly. Um and so I think that's where the real trouble is here because the feds says unjustly fired this whistleblower. So I think that's where the big big hubbub is. But what is he what's he blowing the whistle over? That's what I mean. Like so I'm like, okay, great. Like may, yeah, maybe they wrongfully fired you, but I guess the like they're touting they're touting this as like look at the Trump administration they were so anti environment it's like guys it's not even didn't even happen like so what you guys are you guys are crying wolf on something that, you know and then you're giving this dude a platform and it's like you know maybe he was wrongfully fired but it's like I don't know just good job by that reporter for like wasting time is my <laughs> thing like what <laughs> yeah I don't I'm uh there's somehow some some hawks play into this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a mess. Well, so because, and this drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> so if anyone that doesn't know, so federal lands, so many. I was about to say stupid, but it, it is important. <laughs> so many environmental studies have to be done. Right. Every time it's a new application to drill. Okay, it could be in six months. But yeah. they're gonna be like, nah, got to do it again, right. and it's like, well, nothing's happened, nothing's nothing's changed. Nope, got to do it again. Yeah, why? Because then the biologi- biologists and the environmentalists get another study, and they get to charge another study. Yeah, I've been out on a sage grouse study. It's really cool because you get out before dawn. Wyoming's beautiful. You have the sunset. It's in spring. They're actually yeah. probably doing them right now. It's beautiful, fantastic, and some of the biologists are cool. But it's the dumbest survey I've ever seen in my life. They are literally <laughs> counting the birds, sage grouse. And they do this for four weeks. Yeah. And they have to do it three times in one area. And that's for sage grouse. Yeah. And then, like you just said, they have to do raptor nests. So they have to figure out where the raptor's nests are. So eagles and hawks and all this stuff. Yeah. So I don't. I don't freaking align with this guy where he's like, oh, they were, you know, this is where I'm like, prove it. Prove that the Trump administration was trying to do something illegal through the EPA and the BLM. Yeah. Oh, they didn't because it didn't get passed. Right. Or these oil companies were doing something illegal. Oh, they didn't because it's not happening. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, nothing criminal happened there, bud. (laughs) Um, And then, like, I just kind of walked you through, like, how these bird surveys go. It's like, that's the... I, now the raptor ones are a little different, right? Because they're nests and they're smaller. Um, I think the sage grouse one is the dumbest one in the world because yeah. <laughs> sage grouse are like, you know, some ranchers call them sage chickens. Like they're stupid. Yeah. Like they're they don't do anything, right? <laughs> and we're counting them. Like yeah. this is the dumbest thing in the world. Um, <laughs> and then you have to give them this mild birth on their habit. Like it's Zach. It's the most wild thing I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. Um, so anyways, that's oh, I've gone too dar- down the rabbit hole there. But that was his big concern is like hawk nests, eagle nests, which, yeah, we should protect those birds. Yeah. Um, 
but my thing has always been like, well, t- to what extent though? Like, right, right. <laughs> and then I was talking to an engineer that's in oil and gas. He's like, yeah, but you don't hear anything about those surveys done for wind farms right. for these birds. <laughs> yeah. And they kill bats, you know? Yeah. But that gosh dang All bad right. oil and gas, man. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyways, uh, have you had time to kind of read that over a little bit more? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, that's all. I, my big thing on reading it was like he's not a whistleblower. Like, yeah, he got fired. Right. Sounds I, like I he's gonna get he's rehired not, though. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bummer, dude. You got a job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's. I I it's, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I, th- I your point about the, uh, like the wind farms and yeah. the the study. Yeah. I don't know. It's just let's be equal. But for something that never even. Isn't isn't going to happen, right? It hasn't it didn't pass? It, what it didn't get through in time? Yeah. So what are we talking? What's this? the point? Yeah. What they are don't we have jobs about anyways. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. But it doesn't matter in the long run. Dumb. One thing is that uh, they mention in Wild File, which I appreciate, is this project is losing out twenty billion dollars in federal revenue. Nice. That'd probably be nice for the government maybe a good chunk of change for each of these trillion dollar bailouts that yep. we keep getting but every few months whatever whatever um anyways i want to learn a little bit more about this uh i think cheney just proposed this in the house uh gordon has made an announcement that governor gordon is um supporting what is called the scale act proposed by cheney mm-hmm it's a little weird, weirdly written. In short, it supports carbon capture. Yeah. Which, like we've said, yeah, of course we're gonna, of course our officials are gonna be pushing this because we've put hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into it. Yeah. No. So why not make a bill to protect it? Right. <laughs> yeah. No, it's that's good. So it's which is good. No, it's that's, gonna protect or yeah. it's going to support the bailout, I guess, of the infrastructure. Uh, that's needed to transport CO2 Yep. from where it's captured to where it'll be used for manufacturing. Yep. Um, it looks like they're going to do it underground or they're going to store it underground. Yeah, that's because that's what carbon capture is. Is you, you capture it and then you inject it in ground in the ground. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah. Mike and Mary. Yeah, Mike and Mar- right, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and then that's the trick, though, is like we still have to be using natural gas or carbon for something. Right. What's the point of capturing it if we're not going to use it for something? That's right. But no one seems to understand that. Like, let's just inject stuff in the ground and call it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> just like a dumb, like a dumb caveman. Like, yeah, put yeah, it in the ground. In the ground. <laughs> That's going to be good for the environment. Right. Um, okay. We should do. Uh, we've gone. Man, these Corona's probably like. We've forgotten some of our sponsors, Zach. So real quick, uh, shout out to, well, first and foremost, we didn't do this in our um, celebration. It's the start of March Madness. It's correct. The tournament has started. Yeah. And we didn't have the tournament last year. Right. So this is huge. Yeah, it is. Um, I heard on the radio we had our biggest, a big upset already. A number two seed lost to a 15 seed. Mm -hmm. Ohio State lost to, I have no idea what the team's name is. I can't even remember. Can't even tell you. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Anyway, so we already have a big, <laughs> big upset already, which That's good. which shouldn't surprise should not surprise anybody. Yeah, the reason I'm bringing this up is remember anybody in Cheyenne, anybody in Sheridan, if you are going to go watch March Madness all month of March, which that should be in, that's implied. <laughs> tell them you heard Madness on the Go Be Wild podcast. You get half off your beer. There you go, all month long. Yep, your you first can, beer. You right? can yes, first beer. Yeah. Yep, um, you can use it. Just go in every day. Yep. You know, there you go. Um, drink responsibly, but that's yeah. uh, <laughs> shout out to Black Tooth Brewery for letting us do that. And then uh, I want to give a a read for Jess Hattervig. If you're looking to move out here to Wyoming, and especially if you want to move out here to uh, northeastern Wyoming, so Dayton, Sheridan, Bighorn, Buffalo, give Jess Hattervig a call at ERA Carroll Realty, 307 751 6924. The housing market's crazy. You need somebody that knows what's going on where property is, where housing, you know, where, where the new houses are, yep. uh, who the, who the contractors are. So Jess Hattervig at ERA Carroll Realty. Again, his number is 
seven five one six nine two four. Zach, give us another one because we went a little long on our yeah. first break here. Uh, Sheridan County Title is another sponsor. They offer better service for a better price. Ask for the best title service that has been serving Sheridan County for over fifty years. Uh, give them a call at three zero seven six seven two six four seven eight or visit them uh, on South Main Street. Yep, historic de- historic Main Street there. Um, all right, Zach. I want to give a little context to this. Okay. I messaged you today. I saw this. Yep. And I was all hot and bothered. I was like, these MFers <laughs> drive me nuts. And then luckily, luckily, luckily we do a podcast. So it's like we're not getting on the air and I'm all all yeah. pissed off and I say <laughs> something stupid. So first I want to say PAW, Petroleum Association. Petroleum Association of Wyoming. Man, this corona is really like uh, <laughs> has joined what's called the Western Energy Alliance. They are a group of oil and gas professionals and companies that are getting in on the lawsuit against the Biden administration um, on the on the federal leasing ban. Okay. Okay. This is not a surprise. Sixteen governors are in on it. Now you've got a Western Energy Alliance. Good. Okay. This that's that's expected. That's what they're gonna do. Yep. So, our good friends down um, at Wyoming Public Radio, they reported, um, they have a story talking about, look, the information that Liz Cheney is touting that she's using, you know, as her, her, her fight against the Biden administration um, was paid. So, this is, this is the, their quote here. What was not disclosed, you know, in her report or whatever is the influence and financial support from the oil and gas industry in this study. Yep. Okay. They are wrong, and they are wrong. And I got clarification from PAW today, and this is why I'm, thank goodness we're not on radio. Thank goodness we're a podcast, because I reached out to them, because I, you know, I saw that first, and I was pissed off about that. I was like, these guys are freaking lying to the Wyoming people. Yeah. This is straight pushing an agenda and you're a state run media source. Um, and so, yeah, I was all hot. You, I, you got my message, Zach, you don't need to read it on here, but <laughs> so I reached out to PAW cause then I saw an article about they joined the Western energy Alliance. Yeah. So I reached out and I was like, guys, I was like, give me, give me a comment here on, on what they just said today. Yep. And so this is what they said. So number one, first and foremost, that study. Okay. Don't, don't take their word of like, this was just a study made up by companies. Incorrect. This was done by a professor at the University of Wyoming, okay, an independent study and has been peer reviewed. So it is a validated study from the University of Wyoming, okay, by uh, Professor Tim Considine. 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 Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, if you have a problem with the study and the methodology of how he went about it, you give him a call and ask him how he did it. Okay. That's how that works, guys. Right. When a study's done, you go to them and say, How did you do it? Yep. Okay. Now, and then here's their straight comment. Okay, this is from PAW, so this isn't me. We have become increasingly concerned with the direction of WPRs, that's Wyoming Public Radio, coverage of energy issues in the state, and like all coverage of the industry, we work to counter any misinformation that arises. Multiple studies, including Dr. Constantine's, which is the one we're talking about, one from API and another from the Enhanced Oil Recovery Institute show, okay, so that's three sources, show that President Biden's actions to limit federal leasing and permitting will have and already is impacting, devastatingly impacting Wyoming. Boom, done, period, facts. There you go. Okay. Now, Zach, maybe I'm cooled off now. Just kidding. Um, (laughs) I want to point out that Wyoming Public Radio, I hate these guys. I'm getting so like, you guys are a state media source. I don't care that you're partnered with The Guardian. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care because they've been terrible. And then they're like, oh, we're partnered with Floodlight News. Guess what? Floodlight News is for quote, Zach, what they do. Ready for this? To investigate the powerful interests holding back climate action. I really don't feel like Wyoming Public Radio that this is in the best interest for Wyoming. Right. Yeah. Am I wrong? Am I I totally off base, Zach? Or am I? No, I think you're right. Uh, Wyoming Public Radio. This is, like you said, a state funded, state funded media source. Should I, you would think, represent 
the values of the state of the people who live in this state, mm-hmm. not a select few. And I'm not saying they shouldn't be reporting on some of these things if they're allowed to have these opinions, yes. whether they're wrong or, or, or not. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> you and I have talked for a long time about the just blatant left-wing uh, bias yes. that Wyoming Public Radio has. Yes. Um, and we talked about it on Wednesday. We were talking about it again today. It's taken us a while to f- be able to come to a point where we can talk about <laughs> it in a, you know, very nice uh, yep. and, uh, you know, respectful way. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it's just like you were so blatant, Zach. I was yeah. reading it. And I'm like, this is so yeah, wrong. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, it's on all their social media. I'm like, you guys are the state media. Yeah. And you guys are pushing your own agenda. And I'm like this, and so um, anyway, so I'm glad PAW reached back out with this great message, this great comment. Um, it's good to know that there's other people out there who are seeing what they're putting out, yes. and disagreeing with yes. too. Yep. Like a big power, a big uh, group like PAW. Yep, that's good to see. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I'm glad we're not on radio because I would have, I would not have calmly said it as <laughs> PAW had said it. Um, I want to I want to keep on this track, Zach. So yeah. we just listened to uh, Salem Thine of Esau, and this is exactly what he's talking about: is we need to get out in front, like him at Esau. They and they they they're really working hard in Fort Worth in the Texas area, but he's trying to t- convince those companies, like and then Wyoming companies, you guys need to get out in front of this stuff. Yeah. Right. Because then people are going to believe that and then think like the true oil company that's based out of Casper, they're a third generation Wyoming company that have done oil and gas. They've created jobs for a lot of people. And it's like those we they need we need to get out in front of that and say that is wrong. And we're not the big, bad Samson. We're not the big, bad Conoco. You know, we've been here for years. We employ hundreds of Wyoming people. Um, And it's okay. It's also okay on the same note to tell them they're wrong and then say, hey, any energy is good energy. Right. Okay. If you got it, if you, like we've said about the solar farm here, like, hey, now the dude that proposed it here was a complete idiot, didn't have anything done. He's been wasting a year and a half. And, you know, the county commissioner was like, dude, you have no plan. Right. We don't do this for oil and gas companies. You got to have a plan. Yeah. Just be fair. Just, and so we've, we, you and I have always said that. And I want to make that clear. I'll, I'll take solar and wind if it's going to make my energy cheaper. Right. We've been pretty consistent with that. Yeah. So I have notes in here like, Zach, like, I want you, you know, I want you, Zach, to be able to have free energy. That's not political for me to say that. Right. And then for me to say, I want cheap energy too. Like, I don't know where this has gotten so emotional and so, like, political. Right. For me to say, I just want you to have cheap energy. Is that such a problem? Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's when you get to the fact that, you know, you have people like AOC telling everybody else, if we don't change the way our energy comes, mm. the world's going to end. Right. In, in under a decade. Yeah. You know? That's where the problem comes and from. And they've been saying that since like the 60s. Right. Um, and, you know, like you're saying, like the proactive thing to do, right? So I think now we're... One, we got to get proactive of just the message. Now, I think we need to get proactive of how can we prove to people, like you said last Wednesday, how do we prove to people that it's not political? This is the, and not emotional. Yeah. Um, and I, you brought up the example of that ad where it's like, look at all the things that are made from oil and gas. Look at all the things that we can do with oil and gas. Right. And my and Salem brought that up. And then one thing I was thinking about today is like, why can't Wyoming take the lead and say, hey. We will have one dollar to two dollar and uh, two dollar gallon of gasoline all the time because it's Wyoming made, or natural gas that's under a buck fifty all the time. Yeah, or you could go up to Decker and buy your own coal if you want, anytime you want. Wyoming needs to take that step, and I think the companies need to take that step. Of Zach, if you want to run your house on coal, drive up to Decker and go get it. Right. If I want to run it on natural gas, I can do that. Just like if someone wants to buy a solar panel and put it up, perfectly fine. Yep. That's that's the next step I think we need to take, and especially like for gas too, because like gas is almost about three bucks a gallon. Yeah, here in Wyoming, 
imagine living in California where it's five to six dollars a gallon, mm-hmm. and they're sitting. That's a, they're sitting on one of the biggest reserves in the United States. I yep. think people don't know that. Yeah, right at Long Beach. Why do they pay six dollars a barrel for gasoline? Or sorry, six dollars a gallon. Yeah. Uh, yep. You tell me. So I, you know, so <laughs> that's. It's like let's take that next step. Like I, I'm glad we're protecting carbon capture. Yada yada yada. I'd like us to like take the step of. How about we make our own? How about we refine our own gasoline here? How about we refine our own natural gas? Yeah. Because then it's cheaper, and then these conversations don't happen. I right. guarantee you. Because then if we're making our own natural gas from outside KC, guarantee you our electricity bills goes down. Guaranteed. Yeah. So, anyways, but um, went on a little deep end there on my <laughs> my part. No, I think I think that's good. I think uh, I'm glad. Uh, PAW reached back, uh, yeah, came back, and yeah. gave us that. Yep. Um, I think people, people just aren't informed, or they uh, they don't realize just how far reaching this this really is. Yep. So, um, they they need to be they need to be diligent. Do your due diligence yeah. and go and 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 see these things and figure out what they mean. So. My big question before we jump into the, I don't know if you have a give no ground or not, Zach, but. My big point, and hopefully that came across from PAW's comment, is who are you going to listen to? Wyoming Public Radio for your energy, for, an, for, for, for someone dissecting a study done on energy. Who are you going to listen to? Wyoming Public Radio or the Petroleum Association of Wyoming? Right. If you're sitting there saying Wyoming Public Radio, I can't change your mind. Cause right. Right. That, I mean... It, regardless of the topic, like just because they're a media, it's like I'm going to go to the people that actually do right, it that are working in this field, right? Yeah, you know, right. Um, and PAW gave us three different studies. Yep. So it's not just one. So, anyways, um, we're done talking about it. <laughs> I don't want to give those guys any more of our time because um, they get state funding, they get NPR money, right. and I guess Visit Sheridan pays them money. So, um, one last sponsor, Zach, and then if you want to. Uh, do a give no ground. Um, this is Alpha Graphics of Sheridan. Alpha Graphics here has helped us with a lot of our logo design, web design as well, uh, in partner with DYT. Um, in our studio, they have our nice canvas logo. They've done a lot of our window decals, stickers. Um, they offer all printing needs, so business cards. You know, I mentioned stickers, canvas, whatever. Um, they can help you with web design, social media marketing if you need it, um, and much more. They're an all in-house thing. On Wednesday, I talked about somebody was like, I went there for the first time, and they get they can give me everything I need. I don't need to go anywhere else. Right. And he's like, and I love that. He's like, and, and then one, they're in person. You know, the, it's an actual business on North Main. Yep. So give them a call, 307-674-6277. Again, that's Alpha Graphics here in Sheridan. Um, Zach, do you have, um, do we want to go into carbon capture a little bit more? Um, I know that was something on our mind, or do you have something on your mind that you want to talk about? Um you know, I didn't get a chance to, to do any carbon capture digging. Um, there's not really much on my mind right now. Uh, <laughs> you're you're on you're on break mode yeah, right, right now, <laughs> vacation mode. Yeah. Um, no, I think. Uh, yeah, I just want to reiterate. We talked about this a little bit on Wednesday. Is just um, the mask mandate is over. Yes. Uh, uh, who? How many people you can have in a in a space is is gone? Right. I believe so. Um, at least for restaurants, it, it is. I um, I think, I think this like state governments and stuff, you know, and the city governments can make their decisions. Yeah. Like I saw the city of Sheridan said, you know, they're all going to be wearing masks and stuff to protect their employees, and so it's right. like, okay, well, fine, like right. that's your decision, I guess. Yeah. Um, but for like public stuff, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, the high school like athletics is probably not right because mm-hmm. the kids still have to wear masks in school. So I'm, uh, you know, right, right. I guess what I'm just trying to say is we're coming back to some semblance of normalcy. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, go and support those businesses this weekend. Yep. Um, there, it's going to be really nice out. Uh, go, go pack the place. <laughs> yep. Fill it, fill it up. Yeah. Um, if you've been longing to go go to the pony and sit down there, you know, and not have a huge weight, uh, do it. Go. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. And, and no, hundred percent. Cause like now, cause they're full capacity now. So like, uh, I've ran into Ty and he's like, yep, we've got all our tables back. So Good. they, they, so, um, 
yep, they've got full tables. Um, they closed off their deck, so it's like they you can sit outside, inside. Yep. Um, but yeah, hundred percent support your local businesses. Um, you know, we talk about Sheridan all the time. I think of the guy in Cheyenne, the Sanfords. Mm -hmm. He held on. He, sh I, I want to call him and be like, dude, you were so close. One more like, week and you were there, man. <laughs> um, but like them, like go support them. And I yes. did see comments from people I know in Cheyenne. They were like, I'm going to go freaking to that guy's restaurant just because screw it to the city of Cheyenne. Yeah. And I was like, yes, that's yep. that's what you need to be doing. So do it now. Like don't. Right. Don't do it in in the you know in spite of the regulations. Like this is now the time to go because it's lifted, um, and and support those businesses absolutely. Yeah. And second, I do want to say because we were talking about this before, be respectful. I think that's the big thing that was lost in this. Like the big corporation companies that you know Home Depots, the WalMarts, um, and really any others that are or branches, right? Yeah. Their employees probably still have to wear masks, right? Don't be that jack wagon. Don't be the knucklehead like the governor yeah. used and give them a bad time about it. Right. Okay. That's wrong. I mean, right. and, and that's wrong even if there is a pandemic or not. Yeah. Right. They want to wear a mask. They want to wear a mask. Like right. that's whatever. Right. Like what? <laughs> they're just trying to do their job. Just let them do it. Yeah. That they're, they're in, in no way is someone wearing a mask hurting you. So right. whatever. Okay. Um, and I would argue me not wearing a mask isn't hurting you, but right. you know, whatever. We're past that point. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, be respectful. Okay. If they're wearing a mask, uh, I think one thing that's happened is like for germaphobes, it's like, Hey, it's okay now to be like, I want some distance. Like I'm <laughs> shaking your hand. Like I want to stay distance. Yeah. And it's like, that's fine. Like I get it. Like, yeah. um, so yeah, hundred percent. And then, um, Oh, I had something. I lost it. Oh, if you're going out, so if you're going to eat dinner and then you're like, I want to go watch basketball and yeah. I want to go to my favorite brewery in Sheridan and you're going into Blacktooth, remember, say madness. I heard madness on Go BYO. Yep. Give me half off my beer. There you go. The first one, first not the one. whole ticket. <laughs> if you can swing that, I mean, good for you, but yeah. uh, be, be responsible. <laughs> um, and then uh, last little message is remember DYT Solutions. They're our Cloud Peaks uh, partner. Um, they've helped us with all the video um, and marketing, um, YouTube and all that stuff. Uh, Design Your Tech. And I think it's designyourtechwy.com is their website. Yeah. And then uh, admin at designyourtech.com is their email. So that's Design Your Tech. So thank you guys for listening on this one. Um, this was this will be episode 115. Really? And then Zach, we have a cool guest coming in. So I'll yeah. leave that for everyone to if they're listening all the way through. So. There we go. But uh, remember, go be Wyoming. Have a good weekend. Zach, enjoy the spring break. Thank you. I will. And we'll catch everyone next time.